So how many have heard about Smarlet before? It's actually amazing because uh, I've been in Smarlet now three years. We were 20 people when I joined. I've been giving presentations since that time and three years ago nobody knew about us. So now we are about 200 people growing fast <coughs> and uh, having regularly 10 offices around the world meeting and really like doing those lot of cool things. So I was the first data scientist in Smartly, so bringing most of our optimization features. So hands on developing many things that we have there in the production, meeting customers and bringing the innovations. And as uh, Oliver has explained, so I've been also in Compilang Extract before, so doing these kind of machine learning things in production before Smartly. So what we do, so we have Facebook and Instagram partners, so basically helping the world's largest online advertisers to get better results from online marketing. So for example, Uber, eBay are our customers and using it. So, and that those numbers start to be amazing. So 1 billion euros yearly go through our product. So that gives some scale. So I, I don't like think about it, but for example, that budget allocation that I'm now going through a bit more. So about 1 million euros daily spent goes via those algorithms that I've been uh, doing. So then it's, if you start to think about it that, that way, then it starts to be like, okay, the scale is quite massive already. But then it's still the way how we work. It's really like this kind of, that we do this kind of, the approach is always humble, hungry hun hunters. So we are not afraid of doing things. We have the like, we do this kind of s small development with closely with the customers, mo with the most advanced customers, do some something, get it live fast, test with the customer, iterate, get better results. So even though we now run quite massive scale, it means that we are still prototyping and trying out what things work. Some th th things don't work, then we get that back so that we are maximizing the learning. And everybody is actually full stack. So I'm really like coding sometimes myself, a lot of those modeling parts or then being with the customers, getting the knowledge from that side so that we can actually find out what works. And it's definitely a lot about being close to customer and having sharing just one vision so that we can, we are already 200 people, 10 offices around the world so that everybody are on the same page and we can move towards the best, best goals for customers and for ourselves. So that's about the company, but just to give you a bit more context. So let's start first about online marketing, then may, maybe specifically that budget allocation use case and uh, something else we have. So online marketing, what is the purpose of online marketing? It's basically, uh, okay, uh, grow your business, uh, brand yourself, get more, more customers, so customer acquisition in general. So how does that work? So you have your creative, your ad, it can be on your Facebook newsfeed or your Instagram newsfeed, it can be also the Google site, so you have that uh, Google search or YouTube, something else. So, so you have creative, what you're advertising, you are s selecting who are your audience, there are a lot of different types of audiences, how you can, you can it can be uh, retargeting audience, people have visited your web page, or it can be a broad interest-based audience, or it can be some, some other types of audience. And then it's of course the right time, so finding those that this is the audience that is valuable for me and this is the creative and now is a good time to show for them. So how, what happens after ha you have seen an ad? So there is this kind of website conversion fun funnel so uh, you, there you see an ad, maybe you click the ad, you end up your web page or your game app, and then you do something on the web page. So you view content, you view some products, you add some stuff to the cart, and then you maybe do a pro purchase. And from purchase comes revenue, and then you become a loyal customer, and you bring more revenue in the future, and you bring maybe more customers. So it's actually a very long funnel, and we should understand how all of these steps go. So even though you have a lot of like people seeing your ad, maybe one, two percent in a traditional econ funnel do a purchase, that's actually quite optimistic number even. So maybe everyone then, uh, depends on your product, what you're advertising. But this is like the kind of funnel where we are working. So it's really like all of those parts are something where we can improve the results and get better quality. So audience, so this is one of like how Facebook has very flexible targeting what you can do in audience side. So this is like just like, for example, 
everybody who was in living in Finland and interested in data science, so that would match 9,000 people who, who you can catch. Artificial intelligence matches much more because that's the hype. So everybody is in interested in AI, although they are maybe the same thing. But you can do this kind of interest-based, or then you can do, do lookalikes, finding people who are similar to your best audiences, or then do exactly ma uh, target those people who have visited your web page, or upload your custom audience and target those. So a lot of flexibility in the audience side. Creative side, that's also a lot of, they have like dynamic creatives you can basically uh, from your feed, so product catalog, automatically do uh, creatives that show those products and then we aut automate so that you can have image templates and add prices and something else. But that's really like core value. So then, then there are two parts of like how to control the delivery, so we have for whom to show and what. Then there is bidding, so how much I'm willing to pay for showing this ad. So of course like traditionally people, it's like just showing, you have been buying impressions. Then uh, the field moved from buying to clicks, but now uh, the basic approach is that you can actually say that I'm willing to pay uh, 50 euros for people who do a purchase on my site. And how is that possible is that Facebook is actually then optimizing, they are trying to find people who are most likely to do a purchase on your website. And then they can calculate the prob probability with which they can transform that 50 euros a purchase bit to maybe 10 cents impression level bit. So they do a lot of uh, optimization there so that you, they find the people who are most likely to, to do a purchase on the website. But that's the bidding part. Then there is also a budget. So basically you are defining a budget how much I'm willing to spend on, on my campaign. So that can be 25 euros for example daily or lifetime what you have. But this gives more or less the context. So there are like those o audience creative bit and budgets. They are our levers where we can work. We are doing optimization on all, all of those areas. So Facebook does a lot of things and they are improving. So that's one of our challenges. So they improve a lot. And whatever we are building, we are building on top of their solutions or some other channels where we are working. So we need to understand first really very well how these things work so that we can actually first educate our clients to actually maybe use them th in the best way and then bring something on top of those that Facebook is not providing or where we see more value. Maybe we integrate with third-party data or do something else or do cross-channel things. But we have like bid optimization, budget allocation, creative optimization, finding best creatives or audience wise, so suggesting which are the best audiences. But if you look, one of the like most used feature what we have been building, so this budget allocation, so what I believe is that things that we bring to the user, they should be simple. Although we do complex stuff behind, we, all, all we, all, we don't start from complex, we start always from simple, so that we can find out whether it brings value, but the end user don't need to care whatever there is behind. So they sit, should see this kind of one button, so enable predictive budget allocation. And then we ask what is your goal? I want to maximize the amount of conversions for purchases. And that's what the user defines. And then, then if it means that if, if we want to add some other sliders or configurability, it means that we don't understand what, what we should be doing. So trying to keep it simple, we have, although we, when we started this, so it all, there came all the time requests that, hey, can I have some aggressive slider or this doesn't work? Then you should more think that, hey, Am I doing something else if they have this kind of issue? So how can I still keep it simple while, while I improve the product? Now we have brought quite many other things there, so you can optimize revenue or do some scaling. So it, the, it, the UI has cluttered, but there are additional features. But the whole point is that you have, you have a campaign which has multiple ads, or you have multiple campaigns, and each of those ads, they have their own budget. And of course the performance of ads are different, and you would like to find which are the best ads where you would like to put your money so that you get, you, you maximize the total amount of, of conversions that you are getting throughout the campaign duration. So this is now about this kind of modeling funnel. So it's the same conversion funnel that there was before. So uh, how to model this kind of case? So the issue is that 
uh, I said so there's a you spend comes easily so you have a lot of spend so I, I might be campaign spending 10,000 euros a day but you have maybe 100 ads so then then the uh, budget per ad starts to be quite small or and then uh, even though you have like uh, high sp uh, spend the amount of impressions okay you get maybe 1 million impressions a day okay that's already quite big proportion of Finland but still 1 million maybe 10,000 people click your ad then you get conversion so you could say maybe uh, the let's say 500 people do some ads to cards and after that 50 do a purchase and then comes revenue which is quite random one guy buys with uh, 10 euros one guy buy, buys with 1000 so although you have a lot of data the deeper you go in into that funnel the less you have and still we would like to do decisions on very low level so that we can maximize basically the future revenue or lifetime value so it's it's kind of modeling challenge so in the left end you have a lot of like you have a lot of data but it's not relevant we would like to maximize the lifetime value so that gives this kind of modeling challenge what we do we do a lot of Bayesian modeling and why is why is that because we really need to know the things that we are and take the uncertainty so when you have a don't have so many conversions there is a lot of randomness in that so if you observe five purchases you could have if you repeat the same thing you would have a cousin from two to ten purchases easily and what we see clients doing is that they overreact to many things so they see this uh, three conversions and then they calculate cost per conversion and then when they suddenly see four then they that changes their mind they are now raising up the budgets or lowering so there is a lot of this uncertainties that customers don't <coughs> understand and what when we model well we can like improve their results a lot so I bring some like this kind of theory so that you can maybe learn something more so multi-armed bandits this is one of those methods that we use for in this budget allocation case so what is multi-armed bandits if you go casino you have this kind of slot machines you have maybe 10 slot machines and you don't know anything about the slot machines initially you know how it works you know that you put a coin in and then you pull a lever or arm so you have multiple arms so you have multiple machines with arms and you don't know anything about those but you believe that they are different so maybe some of those machines is going to give me more money so maybe that's not re reality but you believe that there is this kind of thing so, so you you go and you start to put money in all of those and how this multi-armed bandit thing works is that you start from zero knowledge you put money into all of those and then you learn you learn that hey maybe this slot is better so how you do it yourself is also that you do something and then you observe that hey this is good machine I start to put money more money there so this is kind of the basic idea that, that when you learn you start to put more money but when you don't have enough knowledge you still like spend throughout all of the machines so that you can collect learnings so it's this kind of exploration exploitation problem so you want to explore to find the best and you want to exploit the best one when you have found it but things change always so this is like some theory which says how what is the optimal way to do this kind of so if you start from zero knowledge about not knowing anything how you can approach this so it's Bayesian bandits or Thompson sampling so so you should basically with the probability that this machine is the best you should pull it so you should just find out probability that this machine is the best and pull that machine with that probability so if you start from zero you don't know anything so it's uniform probability so you just pull any with equal probability if, if I start to find out that hey I'm fairly sure that this machine is 80 percent with 80 percent probability the best so 80 percent of the times pull that machine and if you follow this kind of approach then you are maximizing your revenues throughout the whole process so it maximizes that you this exploration exploitation trade off so and how this compares to our problem is that okay those machines they ca you can compare that they are ads which have budget so we should allocate the budget in similar pro like in proportion of the probability that this ad is the best in this very simplified theory so that's so so we have a simplified theory so we have now this simplified theory that hey we should m model the probability that this ad is the best so how we can approach this model so we 
start of course simple bring some simple model to uh, estimate this probability so we st for example we can start from conversion rate so conversion rate means that uh, what is the probability that from impression people will do a conversion maybe purchase so there is 100,000 impressions and 10 purchases so this gives the context so we have now six assets so asset is the level where budget, budget is on Facebook so we have conversions we have impressions and you can calculate the raw conversion rate this is actually quite you have quite many conversions usually you would have even just less if you take daily conversions that's like time and other parts are then this is maybe okay in this case conversions from last seven days for example and total impressions just to start somewhere start somewhere so take last seven days conversions impression calculate raw conversion rate and then if you would have that kind of raw conversion rate what what could you do then so okay you that's not exact so maybe with this amount of conversions you can already trust that that's quite like reliable estimate of the conversion rate but it's still quite like if you can model that con conversion rate for example conversions they are not unique conversions so people can do m multiple conversions so it's not binomial process you can model it as a Poisson process so people doing multiple conversions and then you can estimate that hey the uncertainty is for this conversion rates for each asset so if you do Bayesian way you get some gamma distribution which is just the posterior of Poisson but it doesn't matter it you get some uncertainties so rule of thumb for amount of conversions is square root of that conversion gives the uncertainty so if you have 100 conversion uh, 10 is square root of 100 so that's the deviance and plus minus two times the deviance gives rough idea where is the amount of conversions if you would repeat so now now we get this kind of uh, probabilities the uncertainties uncertain distribution associated with the ads and we would like to allocate the budget so now we should calculate from these distributions the probability that this is the best best asset how you can that is via sampling so we do this kind of sampling it's hard from th those distributions immediately to calculate what is the probability that this is the best but you can do it so that you take from each asset you take one sample so maybe you get for you get usually the samples near the mean but you get for each one you get a sample and then from one sample sampling you found out that hey at set one is the best and then you do this kind of sampling 10,000 times and you found out that from those samplings at set one was the best 50% of the time so that's the proportion of budget that we should allocate that's that's one way to implement from this distribution so uh, and this is now the simple model so but then you know that all models are wrong some are useful so you start from that simple you bring that to production and as we did we took a quite big customer and we did this quite quickly and okay we quite soon observed that hey things don't work so perfectly so for example when you do this so what happens we change the budget quite mu much so if we suddenly triple the budget for some asset that actually has an impact to the performance so when you change the budget so maybe you are saturating the audience maybe the how the facebook bidding works actually the conversions will get more costly so we didn't take into that account that hey changing the budget actually affects the performance so we took that into account so modeling that if you increase the budget that actually is going to increase the cost per conversion so those results come so we do an iterative process then to find the stable then there are things like that time time changes so that modeling the time series so of course now that has seven days fixed period so maybe we could model better how is the performance changing over time so then you have of course less data from one day but if you do that those kind of Kalman filtering st style or Bayesian structural time series models you can get quite good estimates from that time series part then you could utilize maybe the funnel part so you know that hey although I don't have so many purchases maybe the link clicks is a good proxy so you can utilize other data there so but it's more it starts from that hey we do this simple model we bring it to production then we observe that hey in some cases it works well already or in some cases it doesn't work and what is the main issue in the model where why it's not working for these cases how we can improve it so that we can actually 
improve and see fix those bugs. No, so now I would say that okay, it's quite stable. We have been fixing most of the like modeling bugs. There, are of course, we know already still that there are some things that where it doesn't work perfectly, but they are quite minor. And if there is some big client or client who actually cares about those, where we can that we should, so then we can improve those areas. For example, weekly seasonally there was something that we just added because we had also budget scaling. So we can scale budgets up or down if the performance is good. But then of course the weekdays vary quite much based on performance. It might be that Friday is always better than Saturday. So I you shouldn't scale budget up after Friday because you know that that was just Friday effect. So now we have modeled that weekly seasonally because it's quite good part of that budget scaling. So then, okay, you can observe this. This is some, some first case results also. So you have the there is the daily budget proportion, so five assets maybe, how they are chasing all between days. So we once a day do the changes because that's Facebook best practice. You shouldn't modify the budget budgets all the time. So that's our constraint. Then just looking how the total campaign conversions are going up and how the cost per action, so cost per purchase goes down. So that's like how you can observe, observe things. We have been doing a lot of A-B testing also with customers, we cannot ourselves, so we do everything with customer money, which is actually quite nice. The advertisers, they are usually very willing to test, so you just suggest, can we test this, and then they give a big budget, and you, you le learn <laughs> with somebody else's money, but of course we have to push. So, but it's, that's the somehow nice thing, although the scale starts to be quite big, customers are usually not afraid. So we can collect that data, but it means that we need to also react fast, so that's the reason why we do something fast, and iterate and learn and not being afraid of push that model that we know that it's wrong but it's still likely useful for something so but that was like the first part so how optimizing conversions so optimizing some count, count event that's still fairly simple so then revenue is a bit harder part so it's going towards the lifetime value optimization so how, how we can do the revenue optimization then Wow, I had some maths. I, I tried to remove from, so I have uh, written quite many blog posts, so if you're interested, so for example, this uh, revenue, there is a Bayesian, how, how we productized Bayesian revenue estimation with stand blog post in Smartly, so so you, are, you can read more from there, so that ha has the details. But basic idea is that ROAS is, that's revenue on ad spend, quite a common metric, so it's just revenue divided by cost or spend. spend. And you would like to maximize that, of course. You want as much revenue per advertisement spent. So that's uh, what we would like. So you have then five ads again, and you would like to put your money on that ad that brings has the best for us, or can bring m or maximize the total revenue over those. So how to model? So we sti are going to still use that same multi-arm bandit. So we have those uh, estimations of asset performance. It's all, all of these are just like imp how we can improve the, our estimation of the ROAS metric, for example. And how to estimate that is that we can divide this ROAS into two parts. So it's revenue per conversion times that like conversion per cost. Conversion per cost is basically what we already had. So it can be that you can say that it's the conversion rate o almost. So for that we had this kind of gamma Poisson model which has time series and other parts. So that model existed and it was working very well. So to move towards the revenue optimization, we need to model well that revenue per conversion. So, but revenue per conversion, that's, that's like challenging. It, we have very little amount of data and it varies a lot. So one people doing one euro purchase and then suddenly one, somebody does 1000 euros. And if you look the average, it looks high, but it was just one random guy doing that. And it doesn't mean that the future purchases in this asset would reflect anyway that one, what this one guy did. So there's a lot of this random variation and we shouldn't react to those unless we are sure that people in this ad group will also, the, like the future people in this ad group will bring also higher revenue. But this is a lot of then modeling, so we should be taking that r random variation away. So this is like just example revenue. So this is like on the left how the revenues usually are distributed. So it's has peak in low and then it's a very long tail 
so there is some, some of those random parts so if you calculate averages from this you go usually wrong so we can model it for ex ex example as a log normal so it just take a logarithm of every revenue and then the distribution looks kind of normal distribution that you can start to model then what we do we do this kind of bayesian multi-level modeling i'm not sure whether you have heard but it's it's the cool thing to do it the idea is basically that we could say that beforehand without knowing anything so that revenue that's quite far from our ad so if you looked at ad funnel so there's a spend impression link clicks at view content add to cart purchase and then purchase brings revenue so does that ad actually have an impact to the revenue per conversion coming it might actually impact the uh, what is the probability of doing the purchase but then after the purchase people what you have seen that even if you advertise something people it's the, pr uh, the purpose of advertising is to get people on your website they will anyway buy something else than what you have advertised so it's more important to get the people to your page to do do purchase than maybe sometimes they actually buy what you advertised but that's like slight proportion so then what it means that actually the impact for an ad to the revenue per conversion is quite small so we could say that by default ads are similar in this aspect for most of the clients there are of course some cases where the ads differ in the revenue per conversion and that we should find out but we don't have so much data for single ad so how to do this is this kind of multi-level modeling there is three parts so full pooling would mean that we don't even try to estimate those on ad level so we just say that every ad is same on revenue per conversion and that's safe approach second approach would be no pooling that you just calculate the average revenue per conversion e for each ad but then what happens is that you have this 1000 euros in some ad and that spoils the average it could have happened in any other ad so these are the like basic approaches and you e either one goes wrong so full pooling you didn't even try to do it no pooling you just like do it totally wrong and you overreact to things that don't are not real so then this kind of multi-level bayesian is uh, like partial pooling so you model it so you say that hey these ads are by default same in for example the camp campaign so ca ad sets in the same campaign they are by default similar if you don't have enough data to justify a difference so you can model that in a Bayesian way and then if you have enough data per ad set so then you can give a better estimate for it if you not then it should be close to the uh, like campaign level average and then campaigns belong to advertisement account and if campaign doesn't have enough information it should be close to the account level average for this revenue per converse so this is the basic idea behind multi-level modeling and you can implement this yourself just like modeling it or you can use some like probabilistic programming languages which are the next cool like deep learning stuff coming like they are actually building for example uh, there are stand by mc3 edward so they are edward is for example just came as part of tensorflow so it's tensorflow probability package but they are implementing there are a lot of different things that they can do there is like this kind of sampling things and there is variation inferences and so on but you can easily define your models in this kind of probabilistic programming languages so then somewhat about the results what we observe is that common case that ad sets don't differ in this revenue per conversion they differ in the like conversion rate but then when we are looking at revenue per conversion they don't differ so if when we, we get this mean revenue estimations per asset so then all assets look similar and what happens this is like way that up upper right corner so there would be the raw estimate on uh, x and then after we have given the stable estimate we notice that hey the raw estimate would have varied a lot but when we get the estimation we are saying that hey they don't actually differ or we don't have enough data to justify that they would differ then there are some cases this is for example the hierarchy so uh, similar colored ad sets belong to the same campaign so we can see that campaigns differ but ad sets in the campaigns don't differ so then that gives kind of how we are utilizing the hierarchy there can be also other cases where ad sets actually differ and they have enough data to justify that they differ so that's one part how we bring the revenue and how how we can incorporate this kind of improvements ah that was more or, more or less it so we are as said we are growing a lot fast so 
from 20 to 200 in three, three years, what I've been part, and still growing fast. So we are looking at these humble, hungry hunters. We have also Ilya somewhere from theater, who is one of our tech recruiters, so you can discuss with him as well. So please, welcome, and thank you.